Hey guys, today we're going to introduce you to Silas and Andrew Chandler. Come along with us. Let's go explore. In January of 1837, Silas Chandler, one of our main players in this story, was born on the Chandler Plantation somewhere in Virginia. When he was around two years old, the Chandler family moved to Palo Alto, Mississippi. We're taking you there now. Palo Alto is about 15-20 miles to the west of West Point. Roy Chandler was the head of the family and he owned 39 slaves of which Silas was one when the family moved to Palo Alto in 1839. Roy had received a land grant after the Indian Removal Act of the 1830s. About this time, the demand for cotton greatly increased, and of course, the plantation prospered financially. And this allowed Roy to add to his holdings. On April 3rd, 1844, Roy had a son he named Andrew. Silas was seven. Andrew had to grow up quickly because his father Roy passed away when he was only 10. Andrew had to take on duties and responsibilities that normally would have failed to his father. And of course, he relied heavily on his body servant, Silas. Back during the 90s, this tintype surfaced and it seemed a full-blown narrative was born. But more about that a little later. Palo Alto was basically a trade town for local cotton farms during the early 1800s. Well, it was established in 1846 and incorporated in 1852. The town basically died when the Mobile and Ohio Railroad moved to West Point. A few years after the Chandlers moved here, Palo Alto boasted Palo Alto Academy, a local inn, a carriage factory, a post office, and a general store. What's left of the general store is all that is left of Palo Alto today. Company F of the 44th Mississippi Infantry was known as the Palo Alto Confederate. And Andrew, whose grave is marked by the large stone on the left, was a member of that unit. That's Andrew's brother Benjamin buried to his right. The photo you saw earlier is believed to have been taken in 1861 as Andrew and Silas were going off to war. This family cemetery is located on what would have been part of the Chandler Plantation. Andrew signed up with the Palo Alto Confederates. They were mustered into service in July of 1861. This group served with Company F of the 44th Mississippi in the Army of Tennessee and saw action in the Battle of Shiloh, Munfordville, Murfreesboro, and Chickamauga. This is Benjamin's grave. We're going to take a look at it and the graves of the rest of Andrew's family as I relate to you some more of their story. Silas Chandler, of course, accompanied Andrew and served him during all these battles. Silas even says that he saw Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston removed from his horse at Shiloh. The 44th did travel through that part of the battlefield, so I tend to believe that the story is true. Just in case you don't know, General Johnston's wound was mortal and he passed away just a few moments after Silas would have seen him removed from his horse. Andrew was captured at the Battle of Shiloh and he is reported to have been concerned that Silas might be freed if he were captured as well. Silas traveled back and forth between Palo Alto and a prisoner of war camp in Ohio, I believe, until Andrew was paroled. Andrew was shot in the leg at the Battle of Chickamauga and was being tended to by a Confederate surgeon when they made the decision to amputate his leg. Somehow, Silas convinced the surgeon to let him have Andrew, whether it was via a gold coin or maybe whiskey, but nonetheless, Silas got Andrew on the train and they moved to Atlanta. They were met in Atlanta by an uncle who traveled with Silas and Andrew back to Palo Alto. During all that time, Andrew's leg was saved. 
You have seen a memorial stone to a KF channeler, and I have to wonder if that was for Uncle Kyle that brought the pair back from Atlanta. I'm not sure, so I didn't identify it as such. This is Roy Chandler's grave. Andrew Chandler never returned to Confederate Army service again and lived out his days here in Palo Alto. After the pair returned home, Silas was sent back out to serve with Benjamin Chandler, or to serve Benjamin Chandler, as he had joined the 9th Mississippi Cavalry. Silas was with Benjamin when he was part of a detached escort of guards for Confederate President Jefferson Davis as the Confederate government fled Richmond. On May 7, 1865, Benjamin's part of the escort was ordered to disband so that President Davis might be allowed to travel a little bit more discreetly. Of course, President Davis was captured a bit later and the two channelers made their way back to Palo Alto. I really don't like dealing with suppositions and what ifs, but since the photograph has been used by some as definitive proof that African American Confederates existed, I feel compelled to offer a little insight from the research I've done as we look around the Chandler, or what was the Chandler Plantation. What I know for sure is that Andrew Chandler was 17 when he was sent off to war. His mother, wanting to do what she could to help take care of her son, sent his favorite body servant with him. Silas was only about seven years older than Andrew, and the two would have had a fairly close relationship considering the circumstances. Silas would have been allowed to travel freely from Palo Alto to wherever Andrew was in service or in a POW camp. Maybe he enjoyed that freedom. Maybe he genuinely cared for Andrew and even Benjamin later. Silas and Andrew are seated at the same level in the picture almost as equals, which was really extraordinary for that time period. For me, that alone shows a pretty close relationship. In one of her letters, Andrew's mother wanted Silas to know that his wife Lucy had just bore him a strong baby son. Perhaps that's why Silas continued coming home and did not run off. It's worth noting that in 1866, Andrew's mom gave Silas and his wife Lucy a little spot of land across the road from the plantation to build a little wooden lean-to church. Silas had become quite an accomplished carpenter during his younger years and often would have been rented out by Andrew's mother. This, of course, is the modern-day church that sits across the street from the plantation site. Not real sure if this is the same site that Silas built the wooden lean-to church. In my mind, it's a good fit. As this cornerstone says, this particular building was constructed in 1965. Silas and Lucy moved into West Point after the war, and there he and his family constructed many buildings. Silas and Lucy had 12 children, eight whom survived childhood. He continued, of course, to work as a carpenter and taught the trade to his sons. In 1868, Silas and other freedmen founded Mount Hermon Baptist Church on land that he and his wife purchased right next to his home. They, of course, donated the land to the church creation effort. Of course, today there's no way of knowing where Silas and Lucy's family's home would have been located. But you'll see as we make our way around the corner looking at this cornerstone, Silas's name is listed as the top leftmost name. Let's take a little better look at that cornerstone. Now we're off to Greenwood Cemetery here in West Point. Visit with Silas and Lucy once again. This is the main gate at the cemetery, and you're panning away from the side where all the white people are buried. And actually, you can see Silas's grave now. His and Lucy's marker is that tall, skinny white obelisk, we'll call it, to the right of the big gray stone. As we pan back in the other direction from the gates of the cemetery, I find it interesting 
that find a grave lists Lucy's burial information as unknown, but she is listed on the back of the marker. This is a joint marker. I assume this is the burial spot for both of them. Silas and Lucy, as I said earlier, Silas and Lucy had eight children that survived until adulthood. They were Sarah, Willie B, Mamie, George, Robert E, Charlie, Clarence Rufus, and William Henry. Silas and his family built churches, banks, homes, and many other buildings in West Point and even throughout the state. Oh goodness, I forgot to tell you that Silas Chandler and Lucy Garvin were married in a slave ceremony. Of course, the wedding was not recognized by the law at the time. This happened just before he went off to support Andrew and the war effort. Silas is on the left in the picture and Lucy on the right. The lighting is not near as good on this side of the marker, but maybe you can read it and we can pay tribute to Lucy as well. I guess this is the point where I need to remind you, if you like this kind of content, hit that like button. One of the first things I noticed after coming to the cemetery is Silas didn't make it too much longer after he lost his beloved Lucy. As was often the case with others, later in life, Silas applied for a pension from the state of Mississippi for his efforts in the war effort. Not sure that you can see his pension application very well, but it is evident from that application that neither the state of Mississippi and possibly even Silas himself considered the fact that Silas offered anything other than enslaved service to the war effort. It is said though that Andrew Chandler appeared on Silas's behalf during his efforts to collect a Confederate pension. Benjamin Chandler died in 1909. Silas Chandler died 10 years later at the age of 82 in 1919. Andrew Chandler survived only eight more months. He died in May of 1920. These men obviously had a relationship their entire lives. And once again, I really hesitate to give my opinion, but because this photograph seems to be the impetus of birthing the movement in the 1990s that presented many African Americans who gave their efforts to the Confederacy as willing participants in the Civil War, I just have to say that I don't see how that either side really can say definitively what Andrew or certainly not Silas, were feeling at the time. There is no surviving written documentation that gives us such information. At any rate, I hope you've enjoyed meeting all the Chandlers today, but especially Silas and Lucy. Please do a little research for yourself on Silas Chandler, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thank you.